Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Now, I was thinking about regulators today when I was typing prompts into Google to see what questions people ask about scuba diving. And such, I typed scuba regulator into Google and I'm answering the questions that pop up. Why do divers have two regulators? Redundancy, um, but it does pretty much depend on your definition of regulator. I think what this question is referring to is the second stage mouthpiece, the bit that you actually breathe from. Divers bring two of those down with them, a primary, which is usually black in color, and an alternate, which is often called an octopus, and that's bright yellow. The primary one is for you to be breathing from, and the alternate is for your buddy to breathe from should something bad happen. That way you can both breathe from one cylinder at the same time should something go wrong with theirs. Strictly regulator means the entire system of a first stage, the middle bit that attaches to the cylinder, and the second stage together. And a lot of divers, myself included, will actually dive with more than one first stage for better redundancy. That way, if something goes wrong with one of my regulators, like one of my first stages, for example, I can then just swap to my second. It's a completely redundant setup. Scuba diving has a keen focus on safety and of course redundancy and our equipment configurations reflect that. If something could break or malfunction during the dive, we like to carry a spare. What should I look for in a scuba regulator? The main things are performance, where you plan to be diving, uh, where they can be serviced, and just customizability of that regulator setup. We have like, travel specific lightweight regulators. They're nice and light and compact, but they don't do so well in cold waters. Then we have cold water regulators on the other end of the spectrum that work everywhere, but they're pretty heavy and just everything in between. So just double check the regulators that you're looking at and make sure that they're designed to work where you're planning to dive. Regulators, of course, need to be serviced normally once a year or 100 dives. Sometimes it's two years, three years, depends. But most regulators, it's, it's once a year. And finding a dive center that can get the parts and actually service them for you is worth finding. So if you're buying regulators and then emigrating to some obscure country that's never heard of that brand, you're going to find it kind of hard to get them serviced. So double check that you can get them serviced wherever you are. And check the hose fittings and the routing options for your hoses from that first stage. You don't tend to see them too much anymore, but some hoses are unique to that particular regulator. So replacement hoses are really limited and quite hard to get hold of. And of course, double check the first stage has decent hose routing options for your needs. There are, of course, all rounder regulators uh, and specialist regulators. You just kind of need to pick one that suits your diving. Should you buy your own regulator? It's really up to you and how much you dive. You can always rent regulators at a lot of diving destinations around the world, and you just need to weigh up the costs of renting a regulator over and over uh, to just the investment cost and the running cost of regulators. If you find yourself diving a lot, then it does become a lot easier and cheaper to own your own regulators. And it's also a lot nicer because if you bear in mind that rental regulators, they're gonna be pretty basic and they get used quite a lot by a lot of different people who don't always know what they're doing with the regulators. So you're not gonna get the smoothest and most pleasant of breathes and you won't be able to tell if if the breathing is slightly weird because something's going wrong inside of that regulator because this is the first time you've ever used it you just figure this is what it breathes like if you have your own regulator it's going to be higher quality uh, you'll enjoy your dives a bit more and you'll know that that regulator has been looked after because you're the one looking after it and of course service properly so those are the benefits of owning your own regulator. What's the most common diving related injury? Probably a bad back um, if you don't lift your equipment properly, but the most common issues reported via email and Divers Alert Network's emergency hotline are ear and pulmonary barotrauma, uh, decompression sickness, and marine envenomation. So 
ear and pulmonary barotrauma is damage to your ears and your lungs due to pressure changes. So just remember to equalize your ears very frequently and of course never hold your breath and ascend. Decompression illness is again damage caused by pressure changes. So don't ascend too quickly or exceed your limits. Try and stick to what your dive computer is telling you to do. Marine envenomation is basically being stung by something like coral or jellyfish or some kind of stinging thing underwater. It normally happens if you're not paying attention and you brush up against something that you shouldn't or you try to handle something that you shouldn't and that animal uses it as a defense mechanism. For that, just pay better attention when you're in the water and do your best not to touch anything in the water uh, and also sleeves as well. Rash vests um, definitely help with a lot of jellyfish and marine stings. Is it okay to share your computer with your dive buddy? only in very specific circumstances. Your dive computer is constantly working out how much nitrogen is in your body tissues based on your dive profile and how long you've spent on the surface. If you start using a different computer, then that computer is gonna be giving you incorrect NDL information and all that kind of stuff because it doesn't know your previous dive profile and you can end up hurting yourself. Now, if you're only diving once, and you haven't been diving for a few days and your tissues are all clear, then it should be fine. But for multiple dives, no, just stick to your own dive computer. If I'm testing out new dive computers on multiple dives, then I'll always wear a second dive computer next to that one that I wear for all of the dives so that I can monitor my decompression on every single dive. And that's the actual dive profile that I'm going to be following, not the one that I've only just put on. It's all about your residual nitrogen from previous dives. If you're likely to still have residual nitrogen in your tissues, then do not swap dive computers. If your tissues are clear, then it's not such a big deal. Just make sure that the dive computer is set up correctly for you. But normally, don't be swapping dive computers. That's a bit of a bit of a no-no in scuba diving. If you fancy investing in your own regulators or dive computer, then head over to simplyscuba.com. And of course, remember to like, share, and subscribe, as I'm sure you always do. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.